Okay, so two possible moves is bishop, bishop here on 3-1 or maybe gold here. Also, I have to look at bishop promote, but the king takes. And that, yeah, bishop promotion here looks a little bit thin. Gold here, king up, we can run up here. Takes. Yeah, that doesn't look good. So maybe bishop here. Here, king up, gold, knight takes gold, bishop here, king up. Now gold here, knight takes. Uh, bishop promotes here, king takes, and then gold. Uh, let's see. So here, king up. Gold here takes and promote king up takes gold up knight up yeah like this takes check up knight here takes and then mate yeah okay good yeah I guess yeah that was the answer good Take a look at that again. So bishop here. If the king takes and gold mate. Uh, if king one two, gold one three, knight takes gold mate. So the king has to go up and check here, force to take. If the king takes and three four gold, so king king. If king back, then promotion here, mate, king up, um, bishop takes the knight, and we have to distract the gold, yeah, mate, okay, let's move on to the next problem. First thing I'm looking at is dropping the silver here. Because the silver and the bishop are gonna control all of these squares here. That allows can't take the bishop because uh four six seven four, rook mate silver here, king back. Check takes, check, I go now, check, like this, if, let me make this room, so king has to take here and then check here, and some kind of I go now. If it's a rook, you can just grab, take some and mate. Like this. Should be mate. Ah, uh, so silver, yeah. Yeah, same thing, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was mate. So again, bishop, silver check, then check here, and mate. Okay, let's look at the next one. Yeah, this one might be okay. It's kind of looks kind of long, but we'll give it a shot. This one's by Shigeta Tsume Para number 523. And it says Yan Tsume Shogi. 
or Yantsume. I have no idea what that means. Okay, so no pawn drop mate on one two. So we need to look at gold here, gold here, also knight drop here. Three candidate moves. Two three knight, silver takes, one two pawn, uh, silver takes. Two two gold. I guess bishop takes knight. Oh, it's one two king takes two three silver one one three king. Yeah, that that's no good. So two three knight doesn't doesn't look like it works. So two two gold. I have king takes three two bishop promote one three king. It looks like it gets out. Two two gold. Our king takes. If knight promotes also one three king. How about two one gold king takes three two bishop promotes one one king two three knight silver takes one 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 two pawn bishop I mean silver takes knight takes king takes two three silver one one king hmm yeah let, let me just show you Wait, if gold he just takes it, so if pawn, pawn here over mate. Ah, here bishop takes. Now he gets out. Have you come out, Mari?
and check here. Takes in a double check and mate. Okay. Uh, yeah, that one was kind of involved. So this one was an Uchifuzume problem. And can it moves are gold here, gold here, or knight here. So the the knight one didn't didn't work. Yeah, now moving the gold here wouldn't make sense. So one two pawn takes. Yeah, king can es escape up to one three. So there's there's no mate there. So two three knight didn't work. Uh, two two gold also didn't work. King can still escape to one three. Bishop promotes one three king. Uh, so that leaves two one gold. And bishop promote. You also have to check this this knight drop here, uh, but that that didn't work. This king king will just run up. The problem is always him running to one three, so he has to keep the king like back back here. So there's only this, and of course Uchifuzume. So you think that maybe uh, uh, two three either. Bishop takes here. Whenever you look at moves like that, you won't kind of sometimes wonder if it's too thin. But there'd be bishop here or knight here. Uh, if if knight here, then silver has to take. And yeah, there's no no follow up after that though. After takes here, he just blocks. Yeah, no, no need to take. Yeah, this, this is a fail, fail. Uh, so that leaves bishop taking here. Uh, if he interposes with a gold, uh, There's a mate like that, or horse here. Uh, so he has to move out of the way. And then you have to look at bishop, uh, knight here, pawn here, horse here, but he just runs this way again. If bishop takes, then just knight promotes here, and then you take on 2-2 two, two next. Uh, so here. And then we can, because of the Uchifuzume, we have to draw the silver back so you can capture. And we force it, the silver back again. And we have this double, now that the 1-2 square is covered, we can, we're able to move this knight away. So mate. Yeah, okay. Let's look at another one. This one was by Ebihara Tatsuo. Tsume Shogi Tetsuji Collection 3. And this, this one was kind of easy. Right. So that right, so that's the Koma Amari variation. So there's gonna be an easier one. But yeah, it sounds like you're in the right direction. So instead of choosing the, the Koma Amari one, there's um, going to be a, a kind of an easier easier way to go. So on the first, te the Tetsuji that they're talking about is this 1-2 gold. So if Rook takes, then just 2-3 knight. So King has to take. And then there's this check here. If king runs up to 1-3, then we end up with this Koma Amari variation. Um, interposition and knight drop here. I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, so that means that the king has to go back here. And we then we just distract this guy. Um, I think I think you found this one, right? 
Okay, so let me just show it one more time. Uh, Tsume Tetsuji. Limit. Okay. Yeah, this one was by uh, Tanigawa Koji. Yeah, famous, famous player. And he had this during one of the NHK broadcasts. He was doing a, a lecture series on, I think, might have been Tetsuji. Yeah, if there's a Koma Amari variation that's longer than you, or a shorter version that uses up all the pieces, then you go with the shorter one. Just practically speaking, though, it's, it's just good that you, you find all of it. You know, some of the, the rules are a bit artificial. The first move, it might, I guess, get people stuck. But, you know, after you take the horse, then there's going to be mate on one, one for you. Yeah, very, yeah, not, not many branches. So easy, easy to calculate. Because then you see the, the knight, the knight uh, coming up to 2 3 in the middle. And so, first move, we, we just use a piece on the board. So, takes and then just make a one for rook. Uh, if, the, uh, if the king goes to 1 1 2, oh, excuse me, 1 1, and then we just have th this non promotion uh, king 1, uh, 2 1, and then 3 1, 3, three 1 rook. Uh, so that means the king has to has to go to two on, and we can try to force the king back into the square so we have that that variation again. So we drop the rook here. If king, if king up, and just takes and takes mate. Uh, so the king has to take, uh, but this time we we don't have have the rook in hand so we, we have to take that into account so uh, uh, two three knight immediately wouldn't work because of a uh, king going over uh, so we have to drop the silver here and then mate Okay, let's look at the next one. This one was also by uh, Tanigawa. Uh, same lecture series. Yeah, the first uh, few moves of this, it, it's kind of obvious, I guess. It's just uh, maybe like one, two, three, four. Maybe from the fourth move on, uh, then, then that's actually when you have to start figuring stuff out. Yeah, and this one, the the opponent's pieces start blocking the king's escape route. So if you're not familiar with with Tanigawa Koji, he's one of the he was the strongest player of his generation. Or, but uh, he wasn't nearly as dominant as Habu, even though he was sort of like the young at the time. He was sort of like the young dominant player. Uh, there's still um, the previous Meiji uh, Nakahara who you know, gave him a lot of trouble, so it wasn't like uh, like an undisputed reign for him. But he's very well known for for his beautiful attacking play. And aside from that, he was a very uh, skilled endgame composer. There's something very aesthetically pleasing about the way Tanigawa plays. He, okay, you, I don't find the start so easy, torn between 1-3 rook, 1-4 Rook and one one rook. One five rook makes a lot of sense. Huh. Well, uh, the reason why I, I thought this, uh, maybe I should just show it to you. Uh, I thought this uh, this move looks kind of obvious, at least to me. Uh, of course, if he, um, if he interposes with something, then you just drop here. Uh, king takes, rook promote. And then uh, he's going to get mated on 2-2. Two, two. Uh, if king 2-3, then 1-3 rook mate. If 2-1 king, 1-1 one, one rook. So that means that this has to be taken like this. And then you force the... Um, then this one, right? Uh, king takes and then 2-3 rook. Uh, king back, 
one um, rook here and then rook promote here. So uh, king has to move to 2 3 because if 1 3 king rook here over and then promotes on 2 2. So um, getting up to this point was kind of, I thought it was kind of easy. And now we see that there, um, the king's escape on 1-4 one, on one four and 3-4 are blocked. So then there's the shape to mate is kind of set up now. After this one, maybe I can show a Yosef problem just to change things up. You know, have you been uh, looking at some of the, the videos that I've been putting out? Uh, not the ones on, on Twitch, but uh, the ones on my YouTube channel. Uh, might as well ask you since you're here. I've recently been putting out a lot of stuff, but I haven't, uh, and I've also been getting a, a lot of watch time, but not very much feedback. So I don't know if uh, people are, you know, just taking it in a lukewarm way or if the thing's actually uh, making sense to them. I, I can't tell. Uh, because also most most of the viewers aren't you know clicking to clicking the like if they do if it does help them i know some people just they watch it and they might they might like it but you know they don't they just don't hit the like so uh, it'd be good to see what other people think about it or oh, desperate moves which complicate this yeah it's a uh, show boute yeah if you find uh, the videos that you're actually learning something from it please make sure that you remember to hit the like and it, it's not simply just for you know popularity's sake but it what the thing ends up doing is uh you know in the youtube searches uh it helps it in the ranking so if you type type things in searches it'll help you know bring those videos up so it's kind of important that you know people uh, even doing comment commenting like that, uh, leaving comments in the in the section below, that also helps with ranking. So I'm trying to, I mean, I'm hoping that more people will do that. Of course, if you don't if you don't like it, then you know don't don't hit the like. But it'd also be nice to to know why people don't like it. I'd much rather hear that kind of stuff than you know not hear anything at all. Um, because the thing is, if if uh, what I'm doing isn't uh, isn't helping people, then maybe I sh I guess I should be changing things or maybe not doing it. But hard to tell without actually hearing people's reactions to it. Sometimes the YouTube search results are kind of weird. Like I I was looking at at where one of my things showed up, and it didn't have very many views. Or likes, and yet it showed up higher than uh, than certain videos that were watched a lot and had a lot of likes. So I don't, I don't know why it did that. Yeah, it's a kind of a mystery to me. I don't know. Do you do you know why it does that? I, I tried looking up, you know, search re like how the search engine works for for YouTube, and the things I mentioned a lot are the, you know like the keywords title of the video, uh, also description, uh, likes, and and comments. Those, those are the things. So my video didn't have much of any of that except maybe for the description and keywords and title. But yet it showed up higher, higher ranked than other, uh, I guess, much more popular videos. Yeah, so most of what I'm doing is is supposed to be aimed at players that are you know beyond the the level of basic understanding. So after I think you can get a lot of really good basics from looking at you know Hidechi's videos or even going through books too. If I'm gonna produce content, what I don't want to do is retread all of that ground. I might as well uh, you know for for efficiency's sake, just refer people to you know those other resources, and then just do uh, put out more original stuff. Okay. Um. Also, think the algorithms take into account what you personally have watched before. Ah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, that's that's good to know. The target audience is going to be uh, much narrower than some something like just just basic stuff. But I think there's a a huge gap in all of the. I mean, I think there's no. It's not a gap, but it's more like a void uh, for more advanced material. So that that's what that's what I'm trying to fill. So I have to know if I'm successful in doing that or not. Uh, maybe the thing is what I'm doing is too too complicated, or maybe I'm just not teaching it well. But I'd like to I'd like to know. Uh, we promote the bishop here. Yeah. Uh, takes and then check here. Takes check and then king somewhere and then mate. Yeah. That, that's kind of a nice problem. So check here and we do a, a little calculation. Uh, the thing does branch out a bit but not very lengthy branches takes and then uh, the nice thing about this moves like this is uh, you know when you can enter in attacking pieces with with initiative okay and then uh, we we set up the sort of the mating shape now that the knight is here and the token is here And we have to clear the three one square. And yeah, mate. Okay, Evil Rookie says, hmm, that's why I can't really use your videos yet until I practice the basics. Yeah. Mylon says I'm ah, I'm annoyed. Ah Ah I'm annoyed because I saw the idea one three rook and notice that if through three one it was free, you could drop the Thurman Bishop, but then think to backtrack and find a way to get the same idea with the 1 3 square free. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, I got that ah accurately. But, okay, we can move on to the next one. Yeah, uh, Evil Rookie, that um, I guess what I'm also trying to do is produce some, some really, really basic videos that we that I explain things on a very kind of theoretical level with almost no variations. I think um, one that I put out was, you know, drive the king to the back rank and why uh, the king in on the middle rank is harder to mate and it had to do with running space. Uh, there's no variations involved. So if you watch something like that, maybe it'll be understandable. And then from there, move on to, um, I guess, more complicated things. Uh, what I want to do is show very, I guess, kind of clean examples, you know, ones that don't, don't branch out a whole lot. And then after getting really basic patterns down, then move on to, I guess, these ideas in actual gameplay. Because when, when it happens in actual games, a lot of the times, uh, the ideas show that show up, but they're in much more com complex form, and things are a lot messier. So uh, we we have to also practice doing that. Aside from just like easy stuff, Mild One says a couple videos I've seen of yours feel like they've pitched at a good level for me. A player who floats between one and two dawn online rating. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to reach. When we start out, I was watching Hikaru Nakamura play play chess, and he was describing his, I guess, like teaching things to beginner players, and he used the term like dumbing down, because when they explain things to you, you, I guess, they try to, in order not to confuse the uh, the people starting out, they kind of leave stuff out and not paint. I guess a nuanced picture so they can pick up the I guess the vital things even though at the expense of I guess the exceptions that could come up but when he when he does his streaming he tries not to do that and you'll just kind of 
present things in their all their complicated glory so you can actually see how professional players think so I would rather take that kind of route but I don't know considering that shogi for an English speaking audience is already a niche by further narrowing it I might be I know as a channel I might will be setting myself up to failure that's why I call this entire thing you know an experiment but I think you might as well try to try to do things that haven't been done before because there, I guess there would be merit in doing simpler things and then getting an audience that way and then moving on to the more complicated stuff so it doesn't have to be one way or the other it's just that uh, you know these things take time and I, I need to use my time in an efficient way. Myland says, I think there are a few hundred people fit in your target audience. Oh, okay. Uh, Eva Rookie says, oh yeah, I think I saw that one. It was the only basic video you had, right? Uh, yeah, but there, and he says, I can't imagine him teaching stuff to beginners. Oh, you, you can't imagine who me or Hikaru. Yeah, I, I think you're talking about Hikaru, right? Okay, uh, let me uh, open the next next one. Leave Toto there. Yeah, you can watch us, Toto. I've been making videos for, let's see, a, a little over a year. So not, not too bad. I have about 100 something, so maybe I think 130 subscribers. So it's going a bit slowly, but okay, Evil Rookie says his streams are actually discouraging in that aspect since he calls 2,500 rated players noobs and tiny mistakes blunders. I, I guess it's relative for for his strength, yeah? Being being so such a strong uh, world-class player. Yeah, this one isn't a Tsume problem, it's a Yose. Um, this one is from Kaneko Takashi's book, uh, Yose no Tesuji 200. And the, the theme is uh, killing double checks. So try to figure out the next move. And this is done with the assumption that your king isn't in Sumero. So there's at least a two, two or more, or the opponent against you. Yeah, uh, evil rookie. What did um, was the video understandable to you? I know I try during the during the recording. I was trying to uh, make it simple, but not so simple that what I was saying wasn't wasn't true. So I added in uh, you know the part about certain exceptions. I don't know if that that made it more that I I can imagine it might have made it a, a bit more confusing. But hopefully not so confusing that the main points weren't tenable. I actually had to record that that basic video uh, more than once because I was watching it afterwards and uh, it I was speaking so fast it confu even confused me a little. So I, tr I tried to clear up my language a bit. Lance two four. What happens if he takes a bishop though? Yeah, so um, threat mate and also two two gold. Uh, silver takes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. So you have to set the check up first, and also make sure that the silver doesn't take the lance. So we do this first, and then now, now silver uh, lance here. So discover check next. Yeah, and gold takes and. Head of the bishop is weak and mate. So this is from the same uh, the same book. So it's a Yose problem. Yes, and if you you think some of the material that I'm presenting is helpful, then you know please let other people know about it too. You know, word of mouth is extremely the uh, effective way of getting getting this stuff out. And I could use all the help I can get. 
I'm only one person and I don't I'm not really good at a whole lot of things so any help I can get with in that regard would you know be great and if you have any any kind of suggestions or or things that work I guess the way that I'm teaching is kind of confusing you know I I certainly want to know that so feedback is is always a good thing to hear uh, so evil rookie how, how many of the Hidechi videos have you gone over Okay, Evil Rookie says, just the very first one about pieces and rules. I'll keep watching more when I have some time. Yeah, good. Yeah, just a little bit at a time. It would be so nice to have a real board to practice on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just want you guys to hear this. As you can tell by the sound, it's prob you can tell that the board isn't very thick. It's only about an inch. Uh, the ones that are thicker have uh, a nice, uh, have a much more uh, pleasing sound to it. What well, typo should be one to king, but it was, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, and you got it on uh, my one. Yeah. should turn this into an ASMR shogi stream. Okay. the answer okay so first we um, do this double check okay king has to take because if not then mate this way uh, uh, so he has to he has to take it so we remember that when we do double checks uh, with regular checks, uh, there's different ways of dealing with, with, with it. You can move out of the way, uh, you can block, or you can capture the checking piece. But with double checks, uh, the only way to deal with it is to uh, somehow move, move the king somewhere. So uh, king has to take. Oops. King takes. And then we do this check here. Uh, if the king runs this way, uh, there's mate like that. So it has to go to 1, 2. Uh, now if we do a discovered check, uh, let's say here, then uh, dragon will take the bishop. and and the king escapes. So we have to prepare prepare the check and we do that with this very solid attacking move. 2-4 lance. Uh, do you remember what you call this type of move? The Japanese term for it? Uh, if not, let me type it in chat. It's a uh, Tegatai Seme. Uh, that means a solid attacking move. Okay, you can. There's also another term. 
あ力を貯めるためるあてそう力をためるて。そう、it's a move that builds up strength or yeah builds up strength。Okay, so two two new vocabulary words for you if you didn't already know. Okay, so now we renew the renew the threat of um. Let me. I can draw arrows here. Uh, here, it's a double check. Uh, this time it will be mate because uh, the rook is. It's bolstered by, by the lance. Okay, uh, like a quiet move in chess. Um, it's not really a, yeah, it's not really a quiet move. I guess it could be. Whoops. Okay. Um, it's almost like, um, you know, like, Having a cannon or something and packing more powder into it, so then, so when you fire off the shot, it comes in with much more force. It's kind of like that, or winding up before you throw a punch. So it's a move that reinforces the next move. So I, I guess it could be quiet, but I, I don't know how quiet it would be because the. The next move is quite, quite blatant, right? Usually, when I think, at least when I think of quiet moves, I think of something kind of a little more subtle. Yeah, this is, I don't think is subtle. <laughs> so you hold back from, you know, um, like throwing a weak punch and you really kind of like throw your kind of crank back crank your arm back and then so you can throw the killing and then knock up low so you do that okay and uh, so mate threat here so dragon takes there and then now we can promote here uh, king up, and then this this dragon uh, defends uh, defends this square, so we should distract it by dropping the knight here. Uh, has to take, and then that leaves uh, this square open. Open to mate. Yeah. Yeah, if you haven't done so already, make sure you. It's very important to start a, a vocabulary list of these shogi terms, uh, because not all of uh, uh, the resources that that you go over will be in English. So if you already know some Japanese terms, it'll you know help you in that. Also, there's certain certain terms that are very difficult to translate into English and if you do so you have to use many you know you might have to use many words or it might sound kind of stilted stilted so in those cases you might as well just use the Japanese term sort of in the way that uh, you know in in judo it's kind of uh, you know, it's an international sport but they still use certain Japanese terminology so if there's a single word that encapsulates the whole concept I th and we can't find a good translation a simple uh, like one word translation in English you might as well uh, defer to the Japanese term at least that's in my opinion right. okay so start that vocab list Okay, so we've done two um, two Yosef problems. 
Then we can move on to the next next thing. Okay, we're uh, let's change things up a little bit. I'm going to show. Um, yeah, it was brought up to my uh, attention a couple days ago. One of the the YouTube channels that I subscribe to have replays of Kifu, and one of them showed this kind of interesting opening trap. So I'll I'll show it to you now. Okay, Evil Rookie says I would have done that anyway. English terms don't fit this game at all. Yeah, I mean if you can say something like third file rook or a static rook like that, you know those are relatively simple things. For shogi, they have uh, they already have terminology that cover very abstract concepts. But if if we do have I guess chess terms that cover it, then I guess we can you know use a chess term. Like there's one in Japanese called saki uke uh, that means like uh, almost like a pre-defensive move. So uh, for for chess players, we know we know of prophylaxis. So it'd be like that. It looks like this came about by a bishop exchange early on, and White is trying to probably build up like a gangi kind of setup, and he developed the knight to three three. You know, it is it is White to move. Uh, what do you think he played next? Well, let, actually, let me give you uh, two. I'll make this multiple choice since it, it is opening and there's quite a few moves that could be played. Okay, one is 6-2 silver. That's a very uh, natural looking move. And the other one is 5-2 gold. So try to figure out one of them is is good one of them is bad so try to figure out which one is bad this one is kind of shocking okay mild one says six to silver feels like it could be risky because it shuts down the king escape but i wouldn't think it's an issue if you didn't say anything almost all of us just just kind of think that a natural move would be good yeah, it actually doesn't have to do with the king escaping. You know, in these gangi-like structures, it's starting, at least starting to become like a gangi, and the knight is moved up. Uh, what what happens? I mean, you do get the knight into play, but uh, on the negative negative side, what what happens? You get to exchange an eighth file pawn at any moment. But wouldn't he be able to do it even with the knight down here? on 2-9. You can exchange the pawns, right? Oh, I thought you mean, meant contrasting with another piece going to 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so when we move the knight up, it ends up weakening this edge. There's, there's some bad oggy around, around this area. So on one hand, it's good that the knight gets into play, but on the other hand, it creates some weaknesses. There's, whenever we make moves, there's usually like some some drawback to it and it actually shows up here uh, this one's kind of uh, kind of interesting so I'll just show it to you uh, I see six two silver does not defend four three silver some b2 bishop two one trick might happen oh good good okay so you see the outline of of uh, the danger good it's probably it's probably sufficient uh, let me move this Let's move this so six to silver natural move that's a mistake as it allows an edge attack so first he exchange he pushes the pawn here and then one five pawn and you've probably seen this sequence of moves before so it takes and then you just sack sack the lance Okay, so rook threatens to promote on 2-1, also 1-4 uh, rook. So it's, it looks difficult to prevent the rook promotion. So if you haven't seen like this, this lance, uh, this lance sack, yeah, it's kind of thematic. Okay, so two threats. Um, it, it's very, how is he going to defend? I mean, if he drops a pawn here, then, you know, one for a rook. And then he promotes here. So, no good. He's going to have to drop the bishop here. Uh, isn't that pretty ugly? Uh, next move, one to pawn. Just threatening to promote next. 
So if bishop takes, then one four rook forks the lance and bishop. If seven one silver, then he just promotes a pawn. This is a good result for black. Uh, let's go back a couple of moves uh, here. So uh, we we have to also figure out what happens if he doesn't capture capture the lance. Can he maybe just drop a, a pawn here, here, here? So he does this, and then now we're going to see why this silver silver on six two isn't isn't so good. Uh, bishop two one. Five to gold. So ideally, he'd like to play two to gold, but the f the silver on four three it would be loose. So he has to defend it by doing this. But then it gives him time to uh, promote this way. Yeah, good. Okay, so uh, the correct move is five five to gold. If he continues with the same sequence, we can see the difference. Uh, this time, if he tries to drop on 2-1, he can just play 2-2 two, two gold and then trap the bishop. So this isn't already protecting the silver. Kind of, kind of weird. It just strikes me as being a little weird. I guess in the same way, um, you know, if you if you know the Onigoroshi opening, it ends up getting refuted by a gold move instead of a silver. It's natural to to move silvers like that. So in in that in that case, you just have to memorize the the exception. So in a way, it's kind of like that here. Maybe what we can learn from this is, I mean, aside from, I guess it's important to know what a natural move is, just so we can find things quickly and know what's played typically, what's usually a good move, uh, but. We also um, can't play these kinds of natural moves without doing some calculation. There's almost like a hierarchy. Uh, in, in Go, they say uh, a move is urgent. So there might be um, certain moves that are higher on the scale of importance. And comparing that with like natural moves, uh, the natural moves will be, I guess, a little bit higher on the scale. The, I think I'm butchering this a little. Um, have you heard of uh, Maslow's hierarchy? He, he was a psychologist. And sort of what he was famous for was hierarchy, and at the, the very top of it, the apex, is self-actualization. So, you know, kind of be all you can be kind of thing. Fulfill your, your potential. So the thing's shaped almost like a pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid is very, very basic needs. So before we can get into a situation where, you know, we can become, we need basic things like air. If we don't have air, we're going to die. And then we, once we have that, uh, we would need like water and then food and so on. And then shelter, uh, safety from, you know, like things like dangerous animals. And as we get those basic needs filled, then we can go up to the higher things, like maybe we can you know, fulfill sporting or artistic pursuits. So the stuff on the bottom are you know, things that we, we need to address very of the greatest importance. We can go to the higher stuff after those are filled. So it's the same same as as this. Sort of calculation would be sort of like on the bottom of the pyramid calculation tactics you know initiative that kind of stuff would be lower in the period pyramid and then uh, above that would be I guess natural moves uh, whenever we do things we we always have to the most important things are you know I guess immediate tactical considerations so I guess that's kind of what we can learn here I, I know this is kind of a simple I mean, a very specific example, but, uh, you know, if we can learn some, I guess, general moral to the story, I guess, I think that would be it. I'm sure there might be other things you can, I, mean, I guess, learn from this. So, yeah, if you think of anything, yeah, let me know.
position actually happened in a professional game that was played, I think, like about a week ago. It was an exhibition game. So even the professional player did this incorrect move and uh, the opponent didn't catch it. So it affected I mean, the fact that it was a natural move affected, ended up affecting both sides. Kind of gives us hope, huh? Let's see, we, you know, we hit the two hour mark. Um, I'm probably going to have to uh, rest for a little while. Uh, thank you for joining me today and, you know, chat. Uh, you two helping me along by participating in chat was very helpful. So thank you, thank you for that. It uh, reminds me of Carlson's King D2. Uh, which game was it? Six in 2014. Uh, I'm guessing you, you meant 2013, yeah? Maybe I can see it in chessgames.com. Game six. Okay. Sorry. So it was this one, this move? Is, is that what you're talking about? Oh. Okay. So, so um, I, I guess you're trying to I draw draw a comparison to this being like a natural move maybe not as complicated as the shogi one you showed yeah that's natural and a one move blunder but black missed it okay uh, let's see is it does it have to do with knight takes e e5 uh, because he's gonna get this get this knight c4 with check is that is that the X takes check? It, it, was that it? Night night. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it's funny because these um the pawn and the bishop um the, the king can't come around to attack the knight, so he, I guess he drops the yeah yeah this thing. This is like a kabe, kabe pieces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, a good comparison. All right. Uh, well, thank you for for joining me today. Um, uh, if you enjoyed the stream and benefited from it, please uh, consider supporting the the stream with donations. Uh, don you can do that by clicking on the Streamlabs link uh, below. Uh, donations are not required, but are always appreciated. Um, thank you again to uh, Chat for helping me around with this, and I will see you guys later. Have a great day.